Look at that, folks. Lead mine brook. There we go, guys. We got another one. All right, folks. Connecticut Trout Tour, part three brings us to Lead Mine Brook up at Connecticut's Litchfield Hills. So as I uh, scale down the gorge here, let me tell you a little bit about Lead Mine Brook. This is a trout stream of fairly small size. I mean, we're not talking a uh, trickle, but um, despite being stocked and offering some pretty decent fishing early on in the season, this river does run pretty low once the warm weather sets in. I've caught browns here before. I've caught brookies here. I generally haven't gotten fish here late in the season. Uh, but I'm fairly certain that there are wild brookies here, which means that trout must find some place where they can uh, hold over in this river. But let me tell you, when it gets warm, this river runs very, very, very low. The last two rivers I was on, the Quinnipiac and the Hop, really made me work for one trout. I am hoping that Lead Mine Brook is a little more generous. You never really do know with these sorts of things, guys. Some days you show up at the river, and uh, it practically serves up trout in a platter to you. Other days, you have really got to want it. What sort of day is today going to be? That remains to be seen. This section of the river is very, very shallow right now. And it's not really for lack of water. It's just that this area of the river widens out so much that even with a fair amount of water for this watershed, for this time of year, there's just not enough to cover so much river bottom. Now there are sections of this river further upstream that we're going to be working with a little later on that are much narrower, have much different character than this. But I thought we'd give this spot a try first. And you can see that my tactic here is essentially just to walk upstream and try all the riffles in front of me as I go. Now again, this is very shallow water. I don't think I've stepped in an area yet that's more than a foot deep. But that's all it takes, especially for uh, these smaller wild brookies. And if there's at least one nice thing about this stretch of river right now, it's that uh, because it is so wide, I can get these nice big back casts. I mean, casting here is just effortless. I mean, it's shallow enough here that you can practically sight fish. So I don't think I'm going to catch anything in this exact spot. You know, I'm really going for these cascades up here and that's what I'm going to start focusing on since we're on the small stream here.
There we go. We got one here, folks. And he's pulling hard. This is a nice fish. Well, look at that, folks. Look at that. <laughs> Not what I expected to be catching here this morning. And I pulled him uh, right out from under the log. Look at that, folks. Lead mine brook. You know, this is not a huge brown trout. I mean, it's maybe 14, 15, but certainly larger than I thought I was gonna be getting out of here. All right, let's let him go. And he's off. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. Was not expecting that, uh, but that gives me a little more confidence for this area. Um, so yeah, maybe I'm actually going to spend a little bit more time here, see if I can dredge up anything else out of this pool, and maybe hit a couple pools further upstream there. Maybe this is a good indicator for how the rest of the morning is gonna go. So you can see here, I actually pulled that brown right out from under this log. And I mean, he hit within just a moment of me dropping a fly back there. There was no hesitation on his part. You know, a brown in a little pool like this, I kind of doubt they're going to be stacked up. But, you know, good measure, you always got to give it another shot. Just going to dead drift it through the pool here, see if there's any, uh, slightly more timid takers. Oh, we got one here, folks. Looks like we got uh, maybe a brookie here. Oh, it's actually, it's, uh, it's not a bad brookie. Well, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful brookie. Right out of that same pool. So yeah, beautiful fish, folks. Oh, we're gonna let him go. Oh boy. Buddy, I'm trying to give you a gentle release here. And there he goes. Oh, he's trying to go back upstream here. All right. So we got two fish down. A brown and a brookie, both out of this pool here. Let's see what else we can do. So, you know, I'm trying to deal with all this cover. I have sticks over here. I have logs over there. The goal here is, is basically to try and position it in such a way that the fly gets carried downstream. Sort of through all of this cover to a spot where I would never be able to actually directly cast it. Well, while I was fishing that pool, it started raining on me uh, quite a bit. 
not a big deal really, but uh, it is making me want to go a little further upstream where uh, I'll at least have the advantage of um, forest cover. Just getting snagged up over here. I'm not really sure what's over there. There's maybe a stick or something. I really don't want to walk in this spot because it actually looks fantastic. So um, I think instead of standing down in the river here, I'm actually going to... Whoa, that's surprisingly deep. I'm actually going to move up to the bank over here and hit it from the river's edge. Yeah, that's, that's looking like a pretty nice spot. And there's actually some nice spots up there also. So, uh, yeah, let's hit it. Guys, this spot looks just beautiful. Lord. Wow, how is there no fish in a spot this tasty? Crazy. Especially after uh, seeing what the spot, you know, just 50 feet downstream turned up. I would have bet money that we were gonna get a fish or two out of here. Well guys, I actually came and hit up that spot that I was so surprised there wasn't a fish in. Wow, how is there no fish in a spot this tasty? Look what we got here. Not sure what this one is just yet. Ooh. This is a rainbow, that'd be fantastic. We got a triple header on our hands. And it is a rainbow. All right. How about that? All right. Let's let this guy go. 
Boy, I'll tell you what, guys, we got another one. I keep turning the camera off and not filming the uh, strike. <laughs> Look at this, guys. And let me tell you something. I sort of doubt that they stock them this small. I could be wrong, but that may very well be a wild fish. Nice little brown. Well guys, I just got a pretty nice rainbow right out of this pool and I thought I had a nice wide angle on uh, me catching him, him jumping clean out of the water, and I came back to my GoPro to find that it froze up uh, because apparently, although I can handle getting rained on, the GoPro cannot. So it's acting a little funky on me right now. Uh, but I'm gonna show you a photograph of that rainbow right now. And I'm going to uh, bring you back up to this pool here and see if we can't get something else. There we go, guys. We got another one. Looks like another rainbow. Boy, he is struggling. All right. Another rainbow. Let's let him go. Right back into that pool. You know, I'll tell you what guys, the last spot looked all right and we've got four fish. This spot looks great. I've already gotten two fish, you know, within my first 20 or 30 casts. Uh, I really think that this stretch of the river is gonna have a lot more to offer. But again, I'm not super familiar with this area. I did find this particular pool uh, earlier in the season. I don't really know what's upstream. I don't know what's downstream. And honestly, seeing both directions from where I am right now, they could both be great. So this is another one of those instances where I kind of just, it's a choose your own adventure sort of thing here. I don't know if the better water lies further upstream or further downstream. I'm thinking I'm gonna head a little further upstream and see what we're working with. Boy guys, look at what these fish have done to my poor woolly bugger. <laughs> the hackle has completely fallen off now. Uh, and it's really sort of just a lame, I don't know, stonefly-ish kind of nymph now. Uh, gonna have to replace that. And that is what it should look like. And we're headed back to the river. This 
pool looks very, very nice. Let's see what we can do. It's really helping me quite a bit that it's overcast today because it's making it harder for the fish to see me. You know, I can kind of walk right up to the water here and I don't really have to worry too much about casting a big shadow. Nothing in the current over there. Let me see if I can pick one out from underneath this tree here. Oh, thought I was snagged there. I wasn't, I should have fished it. Well guys, episode three, Connecticut Trout Tour. I'd say we have a success on our hands. Lead mine brook, several different spots. We got a brown, we got a brookie. We got multiple rainbows. <sighs> Days in the river like this, you really just don't wanna leave. You'd love to just sit there and, and fish the river all day and jump from spot to spot and follow it from the headwaters all the way to the terminus. But you know, the time does come when you have to pack it in. And that time has come for me. Thanks for joining me on Lead Mine Brook. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you on the next river.